I got one trick. Every producer, every songwriter, every engineer, everybody. If you don't take anything away from this, take this away from it. It's the one secret that I give away. You want your kick to hit harder? Turn everything else down. I'm gonna let that sink in. <laughs> you want your snare to be louder? Go in and group your entire track. Turn everything down so that you have headroom. You can hit the red once in a while. All of us have hit the red once in a while in the mix. It's not that big of a deal, but you're married in the red. Turn everything else down. Even if you're in Fruity Loops, Cubase, Nuendo, Logic, Pro Tools. Like you said, basically, like Real said, basically you need to have like great sounds off top. Like if you have good sounds off top, then it's like I said, it's not very much work for me to do because you don't want to come in there with weak sounds because regardless, if you come in with a weak sound, ain't going to be too much I can do to it to make it better. My question is in reference to the dynamics of a production of a beat. Um, say, you know, a lot of tracks out right now that are popping, you know, you got to deal with that, that kick drum and that bass line going on at the same time. Uh, what do you do to handle that to keep them all present at the same time? Are you big into side chaining, making everything else dug down while the kick's hitting and everything's back like a lot of techno records are out right now? Uh, tell me what you like to do to get those to be in harmony together. That, that 808, that low sine wave going through with those kicks coming through at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me, what, tell me about that relationship. I got you. That sounds like a song. To answer your question, you mentioned side chain. If I can get out of these frequencies, I'll be so much happier. <laughs> um, side chain and ducking, uh, a lot of people may not know exactly what it is. It's an event that causes another event. Uh, what you need to do is get you a decent spectrum analysis. I think Digital Design has got one okay. in it. And what you need to look at, the kick drum, these 18s, these 15s, they all hit about 70 hertz. Right. Maybe the lowest 45. Mm -hmm. You may get lucky. Right. But most they're going to reproduce is about a buck 40. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch your spectrum analysis when the kick is hitting and when your 808's hitting. And you'll actually, if you move, some producers out here do it, some don't. Uh, Shorty Reyes got is one of the kings of it is moving notes through your 808. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it takes and starts hitting on 18, they'll move up to a 15, mm -hmm. they'll move up to a 10 and back down to a 15. And it's actually cheating. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna hum in everybody's system, whether they have little 10s or eights in their car or they got 2015s in a van, mm -hmm. it's gonna hit. What you need to do is, same thing I said before about bringing everything else down, if your kit and your 808, you need to be the loudest, they need to be the loudest. Mm -hmm. So on your spectrum analysis, it'll, it'll be peaks around, you know, from 20 to about 120. Mm -hmm. Everything else should be about even. So I don't use side chain much, okay. unless it's for a specific audio ducking or some other reason. But right. yeah, they fight. Right. They definitely <laughs> fight. And that's part of mixing. Yeah. That's something that REL, KY, none of us can actually just, just hand over the knowledge because mm -hmm. We would need a setup here to start showing you, mm -hmm. all right, well, this kick is a little punchy, 808 is boomy, they're gonna work together. Right. But if you got them fighting in the same frequency, you gotta make a decision. Mm -hmm. So, I hope that answers enough of your question. Yeah. Good. That's a great question. What? What? Woo! What? what is one of the key pieces of paperwork that a producer should have? Starting point is gonna be your split sheet. Um, so, I tell my clients, personally, I prefer. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, so of course, I, I, it's easier for us if you go into the situation with everything already filled out. We know what everybody's, what everyone's going to do and get. Points are our percent. Hundred percent of something. So okay. yeah, you so can only divide it in hundred. Right. Right. So when we say points, points means percent. So if I, if I say two points, that means two percent of the whole song. Okay. Um, a hundred percent meaning I wrote the the. The lyrics and the music. Typically, you start 50 50, 50% 50 to the music, 50% to the lyrics it's for each song. Now, there is a way to copyright multiple songs on one form, and that's ultimately what he's getting at. But in order to copyright one, use one form for multiple songs, all of the authors have to be the same. There can't be any difference. If there's a difference, then you have to use a different form. I like you guys' questions. What happens if you do the um, split sheet and you make an album, but someone gets left out? Rel is a producer who used to battle, so now he's in engineering. Can you tell us how that affected your career as far as battling, getting yourself out there, and now being an engineer? 
Don't get it wrong, I still battle. Uh, I'm hoping I can hear something that will inspire me to get back on the beat, but I've been engineering because that's been paying my bills. But um, I started off as a producer though. So that was my first thing. I kind of got an engineer from, from that point, but they both help each other out. Like if you're a good engineer, it's gonna make the sound quality of your production better. You're a good producer when you go in, because nowadays, actually engineers are producing the record when we're in the lab working with people, we're having to sequence things and chop up things, so that's actually production, so it goes hand in hand, so it helps. Bam, I got a CD out. It's out. These are finally pressed up and available for you. It's the Gift Submitted Volume 1. It's, it's an album I worked on for a while. It's finally printed up. It's finally out and you can get your copy. Actually, I want to sign the first 10 copies, the first 10 people to buy one uh, off of eBay. I'm going to sign them myself uh, to wherever it is that the address is on eBay. So if you feel, please feel free to support independent music. It ain't that much. It's good stuff. Y'all seen this stuff on my YouTube channel. Some of the videos that you seen on YouTube, the songs are on here and I really would like to get a copy in your hands. So please uh, help support. I just want to make sure everybody knows that I got a CD out. It's pressed up. So please take some time and uh, order a copy. All right. Thanks. Peace.